coming to the end of the third quarter. LeBron James, a shot in history. And there it is! LeBron stands alone! The NBA's all-time scoring record now belongs to LeBron James. The day has finally come. LeBron is officially the NBA's all-time points leader. It was only a matter of time. Throughout two decades of averaging 27 points a game, LeBron finally claimed the crown. So, does this officially mean he's the best scorer of all time now? I mean, no one has more points than him. No one has been as consistent of a great scorer for this long than LeBron has. What does LeBron being the number one point leader of all time mean for how he ranks amongst other legendary scorers? Now that LeBron is the all-time scoring leader, there's certainly a case for LeBron being the best scorer of all time. In today's video, we're going to answer the simple yet very complex question. Who is the greatest scorer of all time? It sounds easy, can't you just look at the point totals or even the point averages and call it a day? To explore all the different facets of scoring the basketball, we're going to explore several different series of numbers and data to give us the most accurate answer to our golden question. To complete this task, I chose 10 of the most widely known greatest scorers the game has ever seen. The 10 players are Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Kobe Bryant, Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Steph Curry, Allen Iverson, and Karl Malone. These 10 players represent every different way to score a basketball. From 30 foot bombs, to dribble combos into a shot, to tough baskets in the teeth of the defense, you have everything here. So without further ado, let's get into it. Because LeBron James just broke the scoring record, I think it's most fitting if we start with point totals. LeBron nearly edges out Kareem for that number one spot, followed by Karl Malone and Kobe Bryant. This chart is deceiving. See, the problem with point totals is that it doesn't exactly show who's the greatest scorer. It shows who was really good at scoring for the longest time. The point totals are more of a longevity thing than anything. When looking at the chart, many casual fans would start to question why MJ is regarded so highly. I mean, 5th ain't bad, but it's very un-MJ like. So let's look at the point averages. This is where Jordan shines. Jordan slightly beats out Wilt for that number one spot. Kevin Durant and LeBron James follow them up. The averages are better in my opinion, but they're definitely not perfect either. As the point totals favor longevity more, the point averages tend to favor a player's peak performance of their career more. So what else can you use to get the best of both worlds? What other metric could we use to narrow down our options? Another well-known award that we can use are scoring titles. A scoring title is awarded to a player when they lead the league in scoring for a season. Michael Jordan dwarfs the competition with 10 career scoring titles. Besides Wilt Chamberlain, Jordan has twice as many scoring titles than the next highest player. But if a player was second in scoring for about 15 years of their career, would they just not be as good of a scorer according to this metric? Well, this is actually a similar story that LeBron has. LeBron, while only having one scoring title, has had countless seasons where he finishes second, third, or top five. Let's take a look at where playing well matters the most. In terms of playoff points, LeBron James dominates this chart, and it's not even close. I mean, the man has been to the finals 10 times, and until 2021, never missed the second round. It's a no-brainer. Michael Jordan, Kareem, and Kobe all follow him. Like we did in the original point totals, let's look at its counterpart, playoff point averages. Michael Jordan dominates this list, averaging 33 points a game in the playoffs. Again, it's a tale of longevity versus peak. LeBron has an unreal, unseen longevity in the playoffs. But Michael Jordan's playoff peak is almost untouchable. We've covered the tip of the iceberg here. Let's take a deeper dive, shall we? When you look at an all-time great player, most people will remember them for their best years in the league. When you look at the greatness of a player, you don't judge it by their rookie season or their final years with the same lens as their prime. When you think of MJ, you don't think of Wizards Jordan. When you think of Kobe, you don't think of rookie Kobe that rode the bench. When you think of Chamberlain, you don't think of Lakers Wilt. Although we briefly went over how the point averages show a player's peak, we can show it better. I collected the numbers of the player's prime years in the league. I define a player's prime as their best five year stretch in the league. 
So let's take a look at those numbers. As we can see, Will Chamberlain dominates this category. Chamberlain is about 8 points higher than the next closest player, Michael Jordan. I mean, how are you supposed to compete with someone who averaged 50 points a game in one year? Someone that doesn't get enough praise for their peak is James Harden. A prime James Harden from 2016 to 2020 was putting up legendary numbers right in front of our face. Don't be fooled though, although 41.6 points a game in Wilt's prime is unreal, you need the full context of these numbers. You see, Will Chamberlain played in a faster paced era with a lot more possessions. This means Chamberlain is going to get up a lot more shots, meaning more points. When you look at these numbers compared to players that play today, Chamberlain's numbers look inflated. If we compare the peak numbers of Chamberlain to Jordan per 100 possessions, the numbers look more like this. The two player stats pretty much flip. The era you play in matters. The NBA in 2023 plays around 99 to 100 possessions a game on average. Pretty typical. But this wasn't always the case. The NBA over time has been constantly changing. The pace of play has been something significant that's changed over time. Right here, we have a timeline showing the equivalent of 25 points in today's game compared to other eras. If the number is below 25, that means scoring 25 points would be considered more rare or difficult. If the number is above 25, that means scoring 25 points would be considered easier or more common than today. For example, the number for 1960 is 31.75. So scoring almost 32 points in 1960 is like scoring 25 in today's game, if that makes some sense. Anyways, we'll start it from 1960. As we can see, scoring big back in those days was a lot more common and easy. As we progress through the timeline, we notice that it becomes increasingly more difficult to score big. Eventually, we run into the late 1990s and early 2000s, where it's the most difficult to score big. In 2002, scoring 23 points in that year is like scoring 25 nowadays. Then, in the 2010s and 20s, we see the pace rise up to a more standard value. The real reason for these deviations in the value of points is pretty simple. It's the amount of possessions that were played in each game. The chart I'll show you right here is nearly identical to the previous timeline. The league started with an insane possession count per game, resulting in these super inflated numbers. Look no further than the 1962 MVP race. If any of these six candidates put up these numbers in 2023, they would win the MVP no doubt. Anyways, this chart follows a near identical trend as the last timeline, where the possessions hit an all-time low in the 90s and 2000s and eventually normalized themselves in the current day. Why am I telling you all this? To give you guys context for the following stats. Right now, we're going to look at the top 10 players per 100 possession scoring. Assuming everyone played with equal pace, how would all-time great scoring numbers change? Well, they'd certainly change a lot. Michael Jordan's numbers would significantly skyrocket up. Jordan played in a considerably slower era on one of the slowest playing teams in the league. It only makes sense that double-digit seasons break that 40-point mark. Next, we have LeBron James, who's had unreal longevity. He's the only player on this list whose numbers go up past their 15th season. Then we have Kevin Durant, who has the potential to match LeBron's scoring numbers if he can sustain them for a few more years. Next, we have Kobe, who probably could have almost had the same scoring longevity that LeBron did, but suffered from injuries. Then we have James Harden, who actually has the highest season on here at 48.2 but obviously couldn't sustain that high of production. Then we have Wilt Chamberlain, who you can really tell has inflated numbers. Then we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who obviously has all-time great scoring numbers, but it doesn't look like anything special on this graph. And finally, Curry, Iverson, and Malone, once again, look like nothing special compared to several of these all-time greats. Do you see how this chart exposes the reality of these inflated numbers? Will Chamberlain's 50-point season turns into a measly 38 points a game. Michael Jordan had 11 seasons higher than that. That's like two-thirds of his career. Kareem's 35-point season with the Bucks turns into 31 points a game. We see the same polar opposite happen with players of slower eras. Michael Jordan had a per 100 possession average of 40.4. That's insane. James Harden from 2018 to 2020 averaged a mind-boggling 44.7 points per game. LeBron for 16 of his 19 seasons has put up 35 points or more per game. 
the per 100 possession numbers really show the fakes from the real deals. There's one more factor that I've left out of this video until now. Efficiency. I mean, most NBA players could average 30 points a game if they took enough shots. Uh, but of course, that would be detrimental to their team if they did. Efficiency matters because it shows who can do the most with the least. What we're gonna do is multiply the per 100 possession scoring numbers by the player's true shooting percentage from each season. The number will be called the player's efficiency scoring number, a stat that shows how well a player can score while showing how efficiently they can do it. True shooting percentage factors in a player's three point percentage, normal field goal percentage, and their free throw percentage into one stat. First, let's compare the player's true shooting percentages. Kevin Durant and Steph Curry dominate this list, both shooting over 62%. Harden and LeBron follow these two. Kevin Durant is also victorious in this category per 100 possession points multiplied by true shooting percentage. LeBron and Steph Curry both follow him up. Let's compare the numbers of the stat to the numbers of regular per 100 possession scoring. Although Michael Jordan leads the pack in scoring, he wasn't even able to crack the top three with efficiency involved. Michael Jordan for a guard that puts up super high volume of shots was pretty efficient, but the margin for error around all time greats is so small. Even averaging 40 points a game couldn't hold up a 56% true shooting percentage, which isn't even that bad. Now that we've went through all of our scoring data, we have the results to answer the question, who is the greatest scorer of all time? Throughout this video, we went through 9 different categories to measure the 10 player scoring. What we're going to do is add them up. For each placement a player gets in a category, they get a certain amount of points for it. For example, first place gets one point, second place gets second, third gets three, and so forth. The player with the least amount of points, meaning they had the most lowest place finishes, is proclaimed the best score in NBA history. I think you guys can guess who won this video. It's none other than Michael. Jordan is the greatest scorer of all time. Well, at least according to our numbers. He finished with 24 points. Michael Jordan took first place in four of nine categories used. Points per game, playoff points per game, scoring titles, and per 100 possession scoring. He placed in the top half of every statistic used except true shooting. Michael Jordan is the best example of an assassin on the court. Despite playing in one of the slowest eras of all time, with one of the slowest playing teams of all time, Michael Jordan still had multiple seasons with point averages in the high 30s. Besides a three-pointer, Michael Jordan had no weaknesses scoring the basketball. You can't sag off of him because he'll hit the midi. You can't overplay him because you don't want to see what happens next to your big at the rim. You can't put a guard on him because he'll abuse his strength and footwork down low. You can't put a forward or a big on him because he'll abuse his quickness and athleticism. Michael Jordan has a peak that no one has reached in NBA history so far. He has the perfect package on offense. Alright, let's see who finished next. At second, we have a tie between LeBron and KD, both with 34 points. Because LeBron just broke the scoring record and has the best longevity of scoring in basketball of all time, I'm going to give the edge to him. LeBron finishes at first place in the regular season and playoff total points. He finished in the top three in per 100 possession scoring and per 100 possession times true shooting. There's no one in the league that scored about 27 points a season for two whole decades. I mean, you could have sworn this guy was a 2K My Career player, the way he puts up video game-like numbers. LeBron throughout his career has developed all different parts of his scoring game. During the early parts of his career, he mainly relied on his athleticism to get him buckets. Now in his older days, he likes to use his supreme footwork and his knockdown jump shot to score the ball. LeBron, like MJ, really has it all. I mean, what more can you say? He's the all-time leading scorer. At our third spot, we have Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant finished first in true shooting and per 100 possession times true shooting. Kevin Durant is a matchup nightmare. His opponents lose sleep thinking about guarding him the next day. If you were to make the perfect score in a lab, you would pretty much create Kevin Durant. A tall, lanky player that can shoot the lights out, handle the ball on a string, and pass like a point guard. Kevin Durant is the most unguardable player of all time. He shoots over guards and even forwards, and abuses his strides and quickness with bigs on him. Next, we have another tie at 54 points with Kobe and Harden. Because Kobe is a more established scorer in NBA history and has finished his whole career, I'm going to give the edge to him. I mean, you know you're a great scorer when people say your name when they shoot jump shots. Although Kobe was really just a carbon copy of Mike, 
His game was nothing less than exceptional. His ability to hit tough jumpers, his canny footwork, and his overall skill makes him special. It doesn't really show up in the numbers, but you can't forget about his one-of-a-kind mental toughness, determination, and competitiveness. At fifth place, we have James Harden. Harden finished top three in peak scoring and true shooting. Peak James Harden may be the most slept-on player of all time. Similar to Jordan, Harden was putting up point averages in the high 30s while playing for one of the slowest-paced teams in the league. Two words that pop up in your mind when you think of James Harden is isolation scoring. The man absolutely mastered the art of one-on-one -on -one scoring and obliterated anyone who would think to guard him on an island. Our 6 through 10 spots belong to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Will Chamberlain, Karl Malone, Steph Curry, and Allen Iverson in that order. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has insane longevity in the NBA, something that only LeBron could outshine. He was the all-time leading scorer until a week ago. Will Chamberlain has some of the most iconic moments and numbers of all time. 100 points in one game, 50 and 25 per game in a season. Who could forget? Karl Malone also has unreal longevity in terms of scoring the basketball. He averaged 20 plus points a game for almost two decades and pioneered the pick and roll with Stockton. Steph Curry has innovated the game like no one else. Because of one man, the league has become a three-point shootout, and Allen Iverson. He influenced ball handling like no one else. It's because of him half of the league travels and carries like a madman. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Don't forget to bet over with our good friends at BetUS with the link in description. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like these.